Our top focus at this hour in his first bilateral visit overseas as the, Japan, as the Japanese Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida is in New Delhi. The Japanese Premier is meeting India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This is the second such in-person meeting between the two leaders after both met last year on the sidelines of the Glasgow Climate Summit. Kishida will also attend the 14th annual India-Japan Summit, which marks 70 years of Indo-Japan diplomatic ties. This is the first visit by any Japanese Prime Minister to India in four and a half years. Prime Minister Kishida, who became the Japanese Prime Minister in October last year, has visited India in his capacity as a foreign minister of the country earlier. India and Japan, which have been traditional partners since ancient times, have deepened their strategic ties. Working now towards a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific and strategic investments in the areas of security and defense in the modern era. Both are also involved in the Act East Forum and are part of the Quad Group. According to reports, the incoming Japanese Prime Minister plans to announce an FDI worth $42 billion of investment in India for the next five years during the two-day visit. The Japanese Prime Minister's visit to India is crucial in the context of the current geopolitical scenario, while other members of the Quad Group have unequivocally condemned Russia for its invasion in Ukraine. India so far has maintained a neutral stance. New Delhi has called, immediate cessation, has called for immediate cessation of violence and an end to hostilities, saying that all differences can be resolved through honest, sincere and sustained dialogue. The meeting in New Delhi is likely to focus on the following issues. The current ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, ways to work further on the convergence of an open and inclusive Indo-Pacific, talks on progress in defense and security in the regional context, and the way forward for the reciprocal provision of supplies and services agreement. The ACT East Forum, which focused on developing connectivity, forest management, highway upgradation, and capacity building in India's northeast. The Supply Chain Resilience Initiative between Japan, India, and Australia now, Prime Ministers Kishida and Prime Minister Modi are also expected to agree to convene a 2 plus 2 meeting between the two sides, foreign and defense ministers, at the earliest. Later this year, Prime Minister Modi is expected to visit Japan for the second Quad in-person summit in Japan. Quad involving India, the US, Australia and Japan is evolving fast amid the Chinese aggressive actions, specifically in the Indo-Pacific. Now, for more details about what this meeting could entail, joining us now is our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidhan Sibyl. Sidhan, thanks for joining us at this hour. Now, this, of course, is a highly anticipated meeting between Prime Minister Modi from India, of course, and uh, Japan's Prime Minister Kishida. Tell us, what is going to dominate the discussion? We understand the Russia-Ukraine conflict, of course, will be taking center stage at this point. Well, yes, the 14th India-Japan annual summit has started and uh, this uh, has been delayed for a pretty long time because of the COVID crisis. Uh, uh, it has been almost four and a half years since the Japanese Prime Minister visited India. And now, finally, this visit has happened. This is, of course, the first uh, incoming visit at the head of the state or government level to India in, in this year. And uh, primarily, the focus area will be th three uh, three key focus areas. One, of course, uh, uh, the Quad uh, Summit. Uh, uh, we know that India, Japan, Australia and US have been working towards it. The second Quad Summit, uh, in-person Quad Summit, in fact, will happen in Tokyo, in Japan later this uh, year. And uh, the Indian Prime Minister is expected to participate uh, in uh, that. Uh, the second, of course, is uh, the crisis in Ukraine, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And we know that uh, Japan has announced a number of sanctions on uh, several uh, Russian companies. Uh, and we know that uh, Japan has been very vocal about its criticism of Moscow of uh, the invasion. The third, of course, is the investment part. Uh, uh, five trillion yen of investment over a five-year period has uh, is expected to be announced uh, in a short while from now. Uh, of course, the press statement takes place at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time, and that is something uh, that everyone will be focusing on. Uh, every way, uh, word will be weighed and uh, watched carefully. We know that this is is also the first visit of the Japanese Prime Minister uh, who was elected as the Prime Minister of Japan uh, just last year to any country uh, and uh, this shows uh, the the uh, the significance for uh, of India for the Japanese foreign policy uh, but nonetheless a very crucial meeting and uh, we know that uh, this uh, there are several briefings also lined up after that the Indian Foreign Secretary is going to brief uh, the Indian media there is expected to be some kind of uh, comments from
from the Japanese side as well. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this visit shows that how uh, two Asian giants, India and Japan, are working towards uh, many right. common causes. And there are convergences on many issues, uh, whether it's investment, whether it is infrastructure development or connectivity. Absolutely, Sadhana. Now, as you rightfully mentioned, investment into India will be a major topic that will be discussed and announced later in the day. Uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and how uh, to respond to this crisis also will be discussed. Another very important aspect that you mentioned is that India and Japan are both members of the Quad, and the focus of the Quad has been essentially to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific, especially amid Chinese aggression. What can we expect on that front? Well, uh, there will be a, uh, expectedly a joint statement uh, in which uh, free and open Indo-Pacific is something that has been the key word for India and Japan. Uh, uh, both, of course, are worried over Chinese expansionism and Chinese aggressiveness. Uh, but uh, this is something that has been complicated by the Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine. Now, we also know that uh, uh, it is expected that the Chinese foreign minister uh, will be in Delhi in a few days' time. There is proposal from the Chinese side. So, uh, of course, uh, there are many complexities and amidst uh, uh, the changing geopolitics across the world, uh, every country is trying to chart uh, uh, its own geopolitics. Uh, uh, India, of course, uh, has uh, had a good relationship with Japan, with Russia. Uh, in fact, uh, Russia and Japan are the only two countries with which India has the annual, uh, annual summit level mechanism. Uh, we know that the Indian uh, Prime Minister has been the past uh, to uh, Japan uh, alternatively uh, as part of uh, the summit. And the focus is uh, that there are convergences. Uh, uh, of course, uh, one of the key issues that's expected to be talked about is the bullet train, uh, the high-speed train from Ahmedabad to uh, Mumbai. Uh, that is something that is expected to be talked about during uh, the conversations uh, when the leaders uh, uh, said that they have already started their uh, talks uh, uh, at the Hyderabad House. Uh, and of course, uh, the focus will be on how to make sure that this can be uh, if that that this uh, this project can uh, come to reality as soon as possible. But in terms of connectivity, uh, we know that India is worried about the right. Chinese connectivity projects, especially uh, China-Pakistan uh, economic corridor that that passes through Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So uh, to uh, come up with an alternate plan, both India and Japan are working on it. In fact, uh, the Japanese uh, have been heavily invested in connectivity projects in India's uh, Northeast. Siddhant Sibyl, our principal diplomatic correspondent, thanks so much for all those insights and thanks for joining us on Beyond at this hour. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.